argue with each other. Things like religion and race and gender, these things serve only to divide us and give us things to argue about, things to be confrontational about. Can we instead maybe try and find a little bit of common ground, some ideas that can bring us together, some ideas that can unite us? Because it is really important that we unite and come together to try and fight the ever-increasing inequality that's going on in this world. Our system, our system of government and finance is simply not sustainable. It is not equitable. It is not sensible. Our financial system creates nothing but debt. It enslaves individuals. It enslaves nations. It enslaves governments into perpetual inability to pay off their debts. They then have to restructure their economies as the banks tell them to do it. Political systems are creating leaders who are ever more extreme ever more divisive. Look at Trump, look at Le Pen. The, 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 the rate of inequality is increasing exponentially. But you would have heard in January of this year, there was an article in the papers about how the richest eight people in this world, eight people, the richest eight people have the same wealth as the poorest 3.7 billion people. 3.7 billion people here, eight people here. They have the same amount of wealth. How can this be right? It's insane. Many ways that this is perpetuated, our educational system does not prepare us to be challenging of our governments. We just listen and do as we're told. We are dumbed down to the point where our minds have become fertile soil for the myths that marketers and advertisers and propagandists plant in there. Wars are fought for blatant reasons of acquisition of resources. We go to Iraq because we want the oil. We go to Afghanistan because we want their lithium and because we want to lay pipelines there. Every single war we fought for the last 50 years has been for one reason and one reason only. Gaining control of the local resources and installing permanent military presences there. Plenty of money, right? Always plenty of money around to fight wars with. Plenty of money to bail out bankers with. Plenty of money to refurbish our Trident missile system. Plenty of money for stupid high speed to rail linkages. And yet, no money for toilet paper or pencils in our schools. No money to keep accident and emergency wards open. Consumerism and credit are completely out of control. Workers are exploited all over the world, being paid less than a dollar a day to dig cobalt out of the ground. No protective equipment. Children as young as four dying so that we can have cobalt for our mobile phones. It, 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 it simply cannot go on like this. It's a bloody mess. Our system is dysfunctional in many, many, many ways not to mention unbelievably wasteful. Our energy is still now being produced primarily by burning fossil fuels, despite the fact batteries have been around since 1800, fuel cells have been around since 1839, solar panels since 1954, windmills and water mills have been around for centuries. They've been generating power for 100 years now. We've got geothermal, we've got tidal power. These things have not even begun to be exploited yet. Why not? Because oil companies like to sell us oil and they control our governments to the point where they are now allowed to drill in the Arctic, they're allowed to drill in Greenland, they're allowed to permanently defile the face of the earth so that we can continue to buy more oil. Of the 32 million cars currently registered in the UK, at any given moment, between 80 and 99% of those cars are simply parked on the side of the road, not doing anything, not working for us. All of that metal, all of that rubber, all of that glass, just sitting there, not serving us, blocking two lanes of the road with permanently parked cars where traffic cannot pass through. In a sensible world, we would have come up with some kind of car sharing scheme by now, where a dozen people jointly own one car and they figure out how to share it sensibly between them. Why have we not done this? Very simple, changing tires, refueling cars, insuring cars, MOTing cars, replacing, upgrading, 
financing new cars. All of these things are significant revenue streams for big oil and car companies. So it is in their interest to have us keep buying as many cars as possible, despite the fact it's unbelievably wasteful. Why do we still produce all of our energy? Sorry, not all, but most of our energy. In a sensible world, we will be producing it locally, using sustainable, renewable sources, not polluting the atmosphere, not creating piles of nuclear waste, which is still going to be radioactive in 100,000 years' time. Oh, my God, my throat is going. Excuse me, I need just a little bit of a prompt. Um, our farmers, another ridiculously wasteful thing, our farmers are paid subsidies by our government to overproduce crops. They then get another payment to destroy those same crops. The overproduction of food in the Western world is more than enough to feed all the poor people in the starving parts of the world. Our pharmaceutical companies make hundreds of billions of pounds of profits every single year, and yet we still have upwards of 100,000 people die every single day on this planet, a third of them children, because of poverty and because of preventable disease. In a sensible world, surely this simply could not happen. When jobs are automated, a machine, a robot is invented to do a job that humans used to do. In our world, what that means is people lose their jobs, they don't earn money, they can't support themselves, they can't support their families. In a sensible world, if a dull, boring, dangerous job is automated, it should be a cause for celebration. People don't have to do this stupid job anymore. People have more time to spend with their families, more time to spend on leisure. But that's not how our world works. Our educational system is unchanged for 150 years. Our educational system is designed to train people to work in factories, to do those very dull, repetitive jobs that are now being automated. In the modern world, an education system should be teaching people to be creative thinkers, to be innovators, to collaborate and cooperate with each other, to come up with creative solutions to problems, rather than teaching them a bunch of dull, pointless facts which they can look up on the internet and then examining them on their ability to regurgitate those facts and if they do a good job, they get rewarded with an A. You know, this, is, this is not a sensible way to run an educational system. But then, we do not live in a sensible world, do we? In our world, children are more concerned with outcomes than they are with learning anything. They're more concerned with popularity than they are with integrity. They're more concerned with image than they are with character, more concerned with blame than they are with responsibility. In our world, people spend more time with their phones than they do with their friends. In our world, people spend more money on servicing their debts than they do on servicing their families. In our world, 70%, 70% of arable land is given over to growing feed for cattle rather than growing food for people. We overproduce grain, we, then our governments then pay subsidies to companies to chop down the rainforest to make room for cattle. Those cattle are then fed on grain which has been transported thousands of miles over to them. We overproduce the beef, too much beef. What do we then do with it? We grind up the beef and feed it back to the next generation of cows. That is where the BSE crisis came from. This is insanity. This is madness. So what are we supposed to do? What are we, the people, supposed to do when our systems no longer serve us and the whole financial and political system has been rigged to serve only those very, very few that exist at the top? What are we supposed to do? How can we change the world? Well, it's not an easy one, but it has to begin at grassroots level. It has to begin with us. The two or three hundred million people at the top who are currently running things, they have no interest in changing anything. Everything's great as far as they're concerned. The four or five billion people at the bottom of the ladder, well, they're just living hand to mouth. They're just doing everything they can day to day to survive. So it's up to us. It's the middle class in the rich countries. We are the ones who are going to have to change things. 
How do we do that? By putting to one side all of this bullshit here. Argue about whose God is better, whether you're red or blue, whether you're a Liverpool supporter or an Everton supporter. This is madness. We need to find common ground. We need to find ways in which we can unite things that we agree on. Put to one side the stuff we disagree about. We're always going to disagree about stuff. Let's leave that and think about the things where we can actually cooperate. The internet is an amazing thing. Using the power of the internet, we can communicate ideas with each other. One community comes up with a way to solve a problem, they can instantly communicate that solution to the rest of the world. Other communities can take that solution, modify it, adapt it, improve it, send it back out there again. With people all over the world collaborating with each other, sharing ideas, sharing solutions. We can come up with our own solutions to our own problems. Turn away from the centralised control, control structures of government and finance. And eventually, eventually, if enough people can do this, they will become powerless. They will become obsolete. They will become irrelevant. Finally then, they may collapse and we can build something more resembling a human society out of the rubble. That's pretty much all I have to say, but I would very much welcome anyone who wants to ask anything, talk a little bit. We have these slips here, um, we've got little slips of paper to websites if you want to learn more. But please, start thinking about these things because really we are talking about in an extinction level event here, the reason that human beings are the dominant species on this planet right now is because of our ability to collaborate and work together and share. All of this that you see around you today, the argument, the fear, the division, the separateness, this is the beginning of the end of us as a species. If we can't, if we can't figure out a way to leave our differences aside and come together, we, we are coming to an end as the dominant species on this planet. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it.